So I'm sure you all have been on the edge of your seats since we got here this morning and thinking about, all right, what are the purposes and principles of LID, right? And what is low impact development? So low impact development really works with nature to manage stormwater as close to its source as possible. And simply put, slowing it down, spreading it out, and soaking it in. A little wordier, um, a land use development strategy that emphasizes protection and use of on-site natural features to manage stormwater. And it integrates engineered small-scale stormwater controls into the site design. And a key component is getting all the right folks to the table and part of the project as soon as possible. So um, it's not just you know, bringing in operations and maintenance folks once you've got your site design and the development is in the ground, but it's actually having all of those, those people around the table to be an integral part in the site design process. Other things to think about when discussing what is low impact development. Uh, it's used at a parcel or a subdivision scale and site scale is necessary but it's not sufficient. So you really want to take a step back and look at the parcel, the entire parcel, or look at the entire subdivision and uh, think about that as part of your site design and how you'll be managing stormwater at that level as opposed to just at the specific um, site level, site scale level. So it's, it's a higher, wider vantage point um, because it is an integrated system. And the primary goal is that there are no measurable impacts to receiving water bodies. And you accomplish this by maintaining or approximating pre-development surface flow volume as well as durations. This is the water cycle. And this is what in pre-developed conditions before we came and started creating towns and cities and, and using impervious surfaces such as asphalt, roofs, things like that. Uh, this is what um, this is what the water cycle looked like. And the amount of surface runoff from precipitation was only about 1%. And all the rest of it was infiltrated and remained part of the water cycle. But with developed conditions, things have dramatically changed. And since now we have more impervious surfaces that come with development, we have about 20 to 30% surface runoff. So that's a big change from 1% of surface runoff. Now we've got of 20 to 30%. Things to think about, so we've got increased runoff, we have less infiltration, we have higher contaminant loading, so there are more heavy metals and other things in the runoff than there were um, pre-development. We also have less evapotranspiration and uh, water levels that have much greater fluctuations in receiving waters than we did before because of this increased volume of surface runoff. What is LID trying to do and how is LID working to help manage this greater surface runoff than we had before we had pre-developed conditions. The main objectives of low impact development are listed here. So reducing that development envelope reducing the amount of impervious surfaces with things like bioretention, uh, vegetated roofs, um, some of the tools, the best management practices that we'll talk about a little bit further on. Uh, protecting and restoring native soils and vegetation, as Dustin mentioned, that's a really key component. So as part of LID, we're not saying, hey, dig up all the native soils and, and rip up the trees and rip up the existing vegetation and then put in this really fantastic bioretention facility. Um, bioretention is part of it, but it's also maintaining some of the native vegetation that's already on site. And managing stormwater as close to its origin or its source as possible. The traditional kind of gray stormwater solutions try and pipe it and get it off-site as quickly as possible. And this is very different. It's managing it where it falls or as close to its source as possible. Another objective is reducing concentrated surface flow and then minimizing stormwater contact with impervious surfaces as well as increasing stormwater contact with soils and vegetation. These are the best management practices and the LID tools that we'll be talking about today are listed. The soil amendment, dispersion, tanning and planting of trees, bioretention, bioretention with an under drain, permeable pavement, green roofs, and rainwater harvesting. And you'll see on the right two columns, flow control and treatment. So that gets into core element number five, which is um, the runoff treatment, and then core element number six, 
which is flow control, and how each of these low impact development best management practices address each of those core elements, how they address flow control, and how they address treatment. The <laughs> asterisk here on the bioretention and the underdrain, it's more of an advanced topic, but the idea is that if you have an underdrain, typically if it's underdrain to the bottom of the facility, it kind of short circuits a lot of that flow control benefit. But there are techniques with an underdrain where you can elevate it and still provide some flow control benefit. So that's kind of what that asterisk is. Kind of depends on your design and your configuration of how that underdrain works in terms of how that is. And then the asterisk on the permeable pavement is it's not, currently ecology doesn't give credit for treatment for permeable pavement itself. It's really the native soils underneath the permeable pavement that may provide your treatment. So again, if you're, between, if you're less than 2.4 inches per hour, then permeable pavement does count for treatment, but if it's more rapid than that, then you're going to need to provide some additional treatment prior to that infiltration, if it's a pollution generating impervious surface. So how does LID work, and what is it? We've talked about its objectives, we've talked about, you know, that the water cycle is very different um, now in developed conditions versus pre-developed conditions, and so what um, LID BMPs, that list of all those various best management practices that we'll talk about in greater detail later, it's, they're really um, aimed to, they, or they really aim to replace the pre-developed hydrologic functions, uh, which are listed here. So infiltration, filtration, storage, evaporation, and transpiration. So it's going back to that water cycle, pre-development conditions, what did that look like? And LID is really working, um, the tools in the LID toolkit are really working to mimic um, those pre-development conditions and these um, various hydrologic functions. So here we've got a table that talks about the difference between conventional or gray infrastructure when managing stormwater and green infrastructure or LID BMPs. And the primary difference, as I mentioned uh, just a couple of minutes ago, is um, for traditional or conventional um, uh, stormwater management, it, the aim really was to get the stormwater off-site as quickly as possible. And so their end of pipe, large-scale infiltration strategies, um, infiltration basins, as well as small-scale subsurface infiltration such as dry wells. But the difference with low-impact development BMPs is they really are small-scale surface infiltration um, as, such as bioretention swales and dispersion and vegetated filter strips. Uh, another way of looking at this in the Eastern Washington Technical Guidance Manual, they compare conventional is considered hard engineering and LID is considered soft engineering. And um, the difference there, so soft engineering, you're slowing the flow, you're spreading it out, and you're soaking it in. For hard engineering, you're draining it, you're directing it, and you're dispatching it. So that's really the difference between the two, um, the two practices.